Creating an ebook is an individual experience. So my review of Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro is just my opinion of the book and not necessarily a criticism of the author. So the book revolves around Clara, who is a robot or artificial friend, AF. Um, she is gifted with excellent emotional and social intelligence. So in the book, she is portrayed as someone who is into observing human nature. And she is also depicted as someone who is um, extremely empathetic. At times, she seems like more humane than human themselves. So Clara is a product. She's a robot, so she's a product and she is displayed in a shop along with other robots in a well-known street in New York. So all robots are waiting to get adopted by people. So some are lucky with the family and some are not. Clara is particularly um, is interested in getting adopted by a 14-year-old girl known as Josie. Clara already met Josie and Josie promised her that she would come back and buy her when her mom has enough money. It takes a while for Josie to come back to the shop and buy Clara because Josie's mother was not sure if Clara was the perfect candidate or perfect artificial friend for her um, daughter since there were other options in the market. Now let's talk about the characters. We have Josie's mother, helper Melania, Ricky and his mother. Ricky is Josie's neighbor and her boyfriend. To me, the adult characters were acting like little children, screaming, whining, and acting weird most of the time. In one of the chapters, for example, Clara goes to meet Ricky in his apartment, and they're engaged in deep discussion about life, about Josie, and how to help and support her to overcome her illness. Then the mother shows up out of the blue, and she starts talking, to be honest, nonsense. What I didn't like about this book is that there is no world building. If you have read Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, which was published in the 50s, the author creates a new alien foreign world for the readers of that time and until now. So firemen are known to put fires out, but in this novel, Bradbury reverses the formula. Firemen starts them, houses are fireproofed, and firemen are also called happiness boys because their slogan is to maintain an egalitarian society, maintain a safe and equal society. And this goal is achieved by burning books. People believe that books give birth to different social systems or different class systems. So reading, reading or readers are seen as troublemakers or peace violators. The book also explores other themes such as existential crisis, belonging, friendship. What does it mean to listen to other people? What does it mean to talk to other people? What does it mean to belong in a community where people accept you for who you are? 1984 by George Orwell is another example. The book was published in the late 40s and it's a book filled with darkness. Everything you do is recorded so you better behave or prepare yourself to get punished by the big brother. So in this book, you are born to serve the government and you die serving them. Your body, mind and soul belong to the government and if you dare to challenge the regime, you are doomed. I enjoyed how Orwell introduces us to different vocabulary such as double thing, thought crime, newspeak, thought police, memory, and the importance of preserving history as it's an extension of our past, present, and future. Again, it's a new world building in this book. Now, coming back to Clara and the Sun, the concept of the novel about artificial intelligence is a bit ancient, and that is fine. We are surrounded by robots from our washing machine to our coffee machines, and artificial intelligence has become part of us, and it's very difficult to survive without them. Perhaps what distinguishes Clara is that she is able to pick up on social cues. So when she got adopted by Josie, she was able to tell from Josie's facial expression the types of emotions or feelings she was experiencing. Repetition and language. The sun's nourishment falling over us. A special kind of nourishment from the sun had saved them. 
Sometimes she would stand before the large windows, the sun's morning pattern over her. The sun, noticing there were so many children in one place, was pouring in his nourishment through the wind wide windows. I remember what had been happening not long before the sun had given his special nourishment, though he continued unfailingly to send his normal nourishment. To Clara, the sun is her god, her savior, friend, and healer. When Clara learned that Josie is going through physical pain, she would visit the sun in the farm behind their house so that the sun would help her friend and also heal her. I do understand the importance of sun in the book, but the way he writes about it was boring, repetitive, and I would say it lacked creativity. Another issue I had with this book is that the author never disclosed Josie's illness. So from the beginning, we are told that Josie is going through some kind of biological or physical illness, and she had a sister who passed away with the same illness. Weird terms. As I mentioned before, in 1984, Orwell introduces us to new terms, such as double thing, thought crime, but he tells us what those terms mean. In Clara and the Sun, Ishiguro introduces us to some new terms such as oblong, lip to children, island, box. He doesn't tell us what those terms mean. So for oblong, by, Cl by oblong Clara means smartphone. And the funny thing is, in one of the chapters, she didn't have any trouble saying on the screen. And we are told from the beginning that Clara is very smart and she learns really fast. So I kept wondering throughout the novel is that why is she having trouble saying smartphone or mobile phone when she has no problem pronouncing other difficult, complicated, complicated terms. So this one really irritated me. Josie's father shows up in the middle of the novel and he calls Josie, her nickname is Wild Animal. So the first time they meet, he calls her, Hey Josie, my favorite animal. And I'm like, sorry, what is it? Finally, multiple themes. So in this book, we are exposed to various themes such as pollution, motherhood, poverty, fascism, social injustice, human heart, illness, friendship. I'm okay with all these themes but he doesn't explore any of them. He just throws themes every now and then. So I'm, not, I, I'm still not sure what this book is all about, and that's my review.